Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is my lecture to, um, not exactly a lecture, but basically like a study guide session or s a study session for the upcoming test. For those of you in the online class, the test is coming up on Friday. And so um, I've made making these videos to kind of reproduce what I would do in class for a, a review session. And so mostly what I'm going to go through is just the overall structure of the test. And then secondarily, I'll maybe answer a few questions and I'm also while I'm answering a few questions I'm also going to be answering a few questions for the people in my uh, on-campus class because there were some things that we didn't get to in the review session okay so first part of the test the test will be in three parts um, and then you have to take each part of the quiz and you have to take them in order and you can't have too much time between taking each part and the first part is going to be slide identification and so in the slide identification part, you have to um, look at a slide. And the slide will look pretty much just like this, pretty much a full screen slide, except it won't have any of this information down here. And then you have to tell me what the name of the piece is, like in this case, painting from the wall of lines. Uh, you have to give me an attribution, right? In this case, upper paleolithic, and you have to give me a date. So let's talk about attribution just for a second. Attribution basically means who made it. So in lots of works of art, that is specifically the name of the person, Robert Motherwell or Willem de Kooning. But there's lots of artwork that um, existed ol is old enough that we don't have any clue who made it. All we know is the name of the culture. So f the culture is the attribution, in this case, Upper Paleolithic. Um, and of course, there almost certainly were you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of different Upper Paleolithic cultures, but we're just going to use the overall time period as as a kind of a marker for all of those cultures. All right, and then date. As you may know from the study guide, where's my cursor? There's the date. Um, you have a certain amount of leeway on your dating. You can um, say you have, for all dates before 3000 BCE, you can be accurate within 1,000 years. So in this case, you could put 32,000 to 30,000 BCE, or you could put um, 32,000, or you could put 30,000 BCE, or even you could put 33,000, meaning that you could be 1,000 years older than that range, or you could even put 29,000 BCE, and all of those would be correct. So one of the things that that means is that you need to kind of figure out for yourself, are you the type of person who does better with specific dates? Do you remember things when they're very, very detailed and specific? Or are you the kind of person who does better with um, simplified dates? Because um, for the dates after 3000, everything has to be within 100 years. And then for dates after 1900 CE, everything has to be accurate within a decade. So for Robert Motherwell's piece right here, the date is 1967 CE. And you might have to figure out, well, would be better for me to remember 1967 CE or just 1960 CE or 1970 CE. Um, so, and then on the BCE CE issue, um, for those of you who are still a little bit confused by that, BCE stands for Before Common Era and CE stands for Common Era. So BCE basically is what we used to use, what means today what we used to mean BC for and CE is what used to mean AD. You could put BCE down, right, for this, or you could put BC, and I would accept either is correct. And for CE dates, you could put 1950 CE, and I would accept that, or you could put 1950 AD, and I would accept that, and you could even put 1950, and I would accept it. But if you put, um, let's go to there. If you put um, 1350 without a BCE or anything, right, I will assume that you're wrong, right, because if you don't put anything, I assume that you mean CE, that you mean after, you know, after zero. Does that make sense? So if you need to make sure that all the dates that are BCE, right, that you either remember them as BCE or as BC, whichever you prefer, and for all the dates that are are CE, you need to remember them as CE or as AD or just without anything on them. 
So the dating system is uh, for this first test is you have to be accurate within a hundred years for everything um, before 1900. So in this particular case, you could be right with just 1800 CE. Um, or if you prefer, you could just be right with 1880. Um, the actual date is 1886, but uh, that's it's up to you how you want to do it. Okay, and then in terms of spelling, both for names and for the titles of works, right? The spelling should be um, it should be accurate enough that I can tell what you're trying to write and that it sounds out correctly. Um, so if you write um, like you know, if you misspell excavation but it still sounds kind of like excavation, then that would be okay. But if you um, if you instead wrote implosion as the title of this piece, um, that would be uh, points off. So on the test, there will be uh, 10 slide identifications, and they will appear in random order. Um, and the order that they are here on the study guide, there are 22 on the study guide, and their order is basically in the order that we, as we had discussed them. They're not in chronological order. But one thing I will do to help ensure that you are have a little bit of help with your dating, every one of these will have a number right at the top that will say, what number slide they, you know, what order they appeared in on the test. But at the other side, they will have a letter that will give you roughly whether they are the oldest or the most recent work or where in between. So in this case, let's say this slide is exactly in the middle and it appears as number five on the test, right? But also, it is the very oldest work. So over here, it will have an A, whereas the most recent work, I'm not sure what is the most recent work. Let's see. So it's probably this one. Nope, 1967. That thing's older than that. So this one, amazingly enough. So this is the uh, the most recent artwork of the set that we have to study. So if this appeared on the test, it would be J, right? Even if it appeared in the second spot, like it was the second slide, it would be two over here and J over there. So A through J, and that's as a guide to you for you to figure out which is the most, to give you a little bit of a, an understanding of how they relate to each other in dates and to help you out. Okay? Um, so there are 10 slide identifications, and then let's see how much time we have on this lecture. We're, we have a little bit of time to talk about the stuff. Okay, so there's 10 slide identifications, and then there's going to be the second part of the test will be the short answer questions. And that will include the uh, fill in the blanks. And keep in mind for these short answer questions, I give you most of the ones that might be on the test, but you have to expect that there might be a small portion that would appear not on the study guide, but from the homework or from, others from another source. Okay. And so they're fill in the blanks. There will be matching definitions. Matching definitions function a little bit differently than the way they do like in an in-person class where there will be the name of the work or the name of the, the thing to define, right? Like the word silver point. And then as you go to click on it, it will give you a drop-down menu of different definitions that, and it will be the same seven definitions for each one. So you'll see the, when you click on silver point, you'll see the same seven definitions for the next time you click on contour, the same set of seven definitions. And then you have to figure out from from that list which matches which. It makes it a little bit harder to, um, to p you know, figure things out by process of elimination, but you still can do it. Okay. And then the last part on the short answer question would be, um, actually, I th think the order goes with the matching definitions first, then the fill in the blank and then the multiple choice. And, and so in the multiple choice, um, I do want to go over a couple of answers. Um, so since I didn't cover that in class uh, for the, uh, the people on campus. So for number one, the answer is C, amphora. And I will, the question will actually be a little bit even more specific because it will mention that the vessel form is designed for holding wine as well as was used for uh, prizes for athletic contests um, and that 